Tamsin and I are here to like talk about lesson planning. Um, and I threw this little thing together the past 24 hours. So it's not super organized and I'll probably have to go back and redo it anyways, but yeah, just wanted to share it with everyone. So, <laughs> okay. So Tamsin Dexter is 20 years old and currently living in South Africa. She has been dancing since she was seven and started an acrobatic dance and progressing into many different styles. She is currently a professional dancer, a contortionist, and an up-and-coming up aerialist. In her short career, she's performed in a ton of music videos and TV shows over in South Africa and internationally. She just finished her first ship contract on Main Shift 3, and she's excited to see where her next journey leads her. So she approached me about learning how to um, create lesson plans because she's doing a lot more teaching. And I've, already, I've always said document, 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 because your future self is going to thank you. Um, I wish I wrote down all of my exercises and plans while I was younger. It would have saved me a lot of time now. <laughs> so I put this um, screen together here. Can you see that, Tamsin? Okay, so lesson planning, um, I was just going to go over why, the reasons for lesson planning, the benefits, and of course, how to prepare for your dance classes. So Tamsin, do you want to tell everybody why, what made you think about wanting to start lesson planning and documenting these things? Yes, so um, I, I, <laughs> I, um, I always seem to like teach workshop, workshops here and there, and recently I've been teaching a few stretch classes. And I find that every time I have to teach someone or a group of people, I have to replan an entire mm. lesson. Just, and I always write them down and um, I keep them. But depending on the, the level of the kids and where they come from and their background, I always have to adapt it and I always end up doing a new one anyway. So it would just be nice to have something that I could go back to and be like, okay, they're probably at about like level, level three. So I'm going to take them this lesson plan and – and then if I teach them again, I can be like, last time I taught them level three, now I'm going to teach them level four. So that's kind of how I want to do it. Yes, exactly. It saves you a whole bunch of time. Yeah. Okay. So why lesson plan? Like we just said, it saves, it saves your class a lot of time in the studio, firstly. So if you have your lesson planned, I feel like you're not taking, taking up as much class time to put the music on and be like, okay, we're going to do like, here's your four counts of eight let's change this, add that. Like if you, if you come more prepared, then your class is just going to flow so much quicker and you can get through so much more material versus winging it. Right. So it, and then it saves you time as the teacher, because I know what I'm teaching for the entire month of April, which is amazing. So it's always like that first week of the month is really busy because I'm trying to plan all of the classes, but then it goes, on autopilot for the, re the next three weeks. So it's nice. I get more time at home to work on the business or do other things. So Tamsin, just jump in if you have any questions as we go through everything. Um, clear goals and guidelines for your classes, no more winging it. So just like I said, and especially if you're teaching little ones like we are right now, um, they feel much more confident as they get comfortable with the material and you'll see them actually progress and get better throughout the month, which is what you want. So document all your classes and exercises so you can literally go into your notebook or hopefully your filing cabinet if you're super organized and just pull out whichever lessons you want to do. You'll be able to teach on a whim. If somebody calls you and asks you to sub for a class, you can be like, oh, yes, I have an awesome class plan for them. Like, let's go and pull this. So how do I start? All right. Begin with the end in mind. So you want to think about where you want your class to be, and then you're going to re reverse engineer that and modify all of the exercises and start from A and then to B to C to D to D, like up so that you can get to that end goal. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, so if you like, for example, if you want to talk acro and you're saying, OK, I want my kids to be able to do side aerials. Well, what do they need to do beforehand to get up to that side aerial? And then you're going to plan those lessons, you know, according to that. That's very interesting. Think of it that way. I'll so, find. yeah, and it's going to be different if you're thinking of classes for like workshops or if you're looking to build a curriculum, that's going to be different. Because if you like if you have a workshop, 
you have to think about, okay, what am I going to do? Do I want to keep the whole class moving and inspire and give awesome choreography and just have them do the best that they can? Or do I want to place like, you know, if I do, I want them to leave with one or two niche, like targeted takeaways. Like, do we just want to work on turns and do I just want to give them something, you know, to take home with them on how to improve their turns? Or do I want to just inspire and keep them moving. So doing a workshop versus writing a whole entire curriculum is going to be a little bit different. So like I said, write down the goals for your class, whether it's a workshop or for a full curriculum. Keep in mind for a curriculum you have about, it could be different in South Africa, but in the States you have 40 weeks or 10 months to achieve all of these goals and skills that you want your class um, to be able to do at the end of the year. So you want each lesson to be progression based, which means you want to not have to do as much spotting as possible. So for example, since we're both talking acro mainly here, acro and, and ballet is what we're focusing on the studio here. Um, progression based means like if I want my, my pre's to be able to do a back bend at the end of the season, then I'm going to start with just a baby bridge and then a tabletop and then maybe a back bend and then we're going to build from that back bend so i'm not just saying okay guys we're going to do back bends and they can't do it and i'm walking around spotting them lifting everybody up to do back bends so you really want to like i said like try and modify everything so that the kids and like dancers grow on their own yes and how long would you like keep it at the specific level like if you're doing or how long would you stay on bridges before you progress to something else? Like, you get a lot of uh, so that's, that is kind of like teacher to teacher. But for me, I try to get the entire class on the same level before I give the next one. I know you have to kind of suss out that balance because you're going to have kids that are going to obviously like get things quicker than some others. And you don't want them to get bored, which is what happens sometimes too. So as soon as you do start to see some like dancers getting a little bit bored, like, okay, we've done the same thing, then yeah, you can say, all right, Susie, like, since you have your back bend and you've been doing it for a while, like, let's give you this next skill, yes. you know? But I do, I, I just like to have everybody on the same page. So I really try to, and, and to get the girls that are like, not as, or a little bit, more time if they need more time to get things then i try to do private lessons with them or extra practice just to help move everybody yeah. together in unison so if planning a once-off class think about your objective like we mentioned um to keep them moving and dance their hearts out to inspire them and choreograph you know or to incorporate one or two specific games to work on so that would just be your personal preference as a teacher like what you know, what do you want to do with the class? So right now, um, our most popular classes are pre-acro and pre-ballet. So right now, it took me the whole year to write 10 lessons for pre-acro and pre-ballet, but it's awesome because I now have this whole like material for an entire dance season that next year when teachers come in, I can just be like, here's your file. There you go. Here's your whole lesson for the whole year. Like the teacher doesn't have to do any planning now, which is nice. And we videoed all of the lessons so they can just go and watch the video and teach the class, which is nice. So I wrote out for the pre-acro, you can see. So at the end of the season, they should be able to hold their back bend for 30 seconds and do a back bend from standing splits and all of the examples downwards. Um, and then pre-ballet, this is all of the all of the steps that they should be able to to do by the end of the season. So if you wanted to start like that for your dancers, just write out everything that you want them to be able to do, right? And then you're gonna cater your lesson towards those skills. Okay, so what are some things, uh, I mean, yeah, I know you're planning to write for the class on Sunday, but in the future, like your, the classes that you're teaching, what are you teaching right now, just out of curiosity? Um, I'm teaching like, they call it yeah, contortion, it's pretty much acrobatics, um, mm -hmm. but for the, the target is older, older people. So, I mean, there's people who, who can't develop and some of them do have a background. So like 
or doing a backbend they could do, but they can't do uh, walkovers yet. Or mm-hmm. so like it's a different level, but it's also older older people. So um, yeah. So would you still um, say it's it's adult beginner then? Yeah. Okay. Beginner intermediate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so then I would just write out a list of skills that you would want that class to be able to do over the next I mean, are are you teaching these people regularly? Or is it like once off, once in a blue moon private lessons type of thing? I started with like about three three weeks ago. Okay. I started. And um it would be great if I could continue after all of this is done. Um, but it's pretty much I teach twice a week. Once is like hip to contortion with a little bit more tricks, and the one I teach for today was um, just stretching, just general stretching. So it's for both for both targets for people who just want to get a stretch and for people who want to try and do tricks as well. Yeah, and I'm saying, and if you start writing out your whole like lesson plans, oh my goodness, it's going to be easier on you while you're teaching because you get more familiar with how like everything the class that you're going to do in the class so it just flows from your head like non-stop which is the best i can already feel that like with the lesson, lesson plan i wrote about three weeks ago and every day every time i teach i kind of progress it a little mm-hmm. and uh, just feel how your body naturally and sometimes you just kind of you deviate but because you know okay this is actually what i did last week but um it comes to the lessons when you when you just don't know like i don't know what the next step is you know like i feel like sometimes I've taught everything and now what's the next step? I don't know. Yeah, you just, yeah. I mean, when that happens to me, I just actually have to sit down when I'm not in the studio and think, okay, what's the next step going to be? And sometimes you need to YouTube for some inspiration and then you might see something that you like and then put a little bit of your own twist on it and then develop something completely new. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, this is how I, I just started writing out like what I wanted these kids to be able to do by the time I was done with them. So, and it's helping now because once they can do all of these things, it helps for parents as well. I don't know if you eventually want to start teaching kids and at a studio or start your own studio, but if you have a list of these skills and you have somebody come and say like, well, why isn't my daughter in the next level? You can say, well, these are the things she needs to to be able to do. <laughs> so that's helped me a lot, um, which, yeah, anyways, that goes on to a whole nother conversation. But I like to write out what I want them to be able to do by the end of, you know, either the season or the hour lesson that we're doing and then go from there. So step two would then to be create your class objectives, your objectives being, um, for example, bullet number two in creative movement, a whole objective of a class can be catered to levels, to tempo. And then this class, we're going to do shapes. And this class, we're going to work on textures. And this class, we're going to work on improvisation. And so it can be the same thing with um, adult acro contortion classes, like you're saying you wanted to do. You could do, I don't know, you could focus on um, shoulder, you know, the shoulder girdle and stretching all of, you know, shoulder exercises you could work on, just strengthening the back. You could work on core, you, you know, you can cater to different muscle groups if you wanted to. Um, for workshop classes, yeah, like I said, are you focusing on leaps, turns, extensions, or well-rounded bit of everything? Again, just keeping them moving or specific gains. Um, so think about what your what your class objective is. Let me see if I can find... Let me see if I can find some in the acro here. I don't think I put any, I didn't do class objectives for acro because it's just kind of strength based everything, body. <laughs> for creative, I do. For technique classes, I do. And for ballet classes, I usually do. So are we gonna work on petit allegro? Are we going to, yeah, do all of those things? But for acro, I don't know. I don't think you really need one, do you? Uh, build class sections. So sections, um, can you see, I'll show you what the, my lesson plans like look like at the very end, but I have them all grouped into sections that appear throughout my lessons every single month. 
So I know in my brain that, okay, we start with cardio warm up, then we're going to go to flexibility, then we're going to go to back exercises, and then we're going to go to technique, and then we're going to go do a drill, and then we're going to do across the floor. Like there's these sections in the lesson plan that just help you to remember what comes next. So within each section of your lesson plan lies your exercises and combinations. These are what you're going to have choreographed to be in line or cohesive with your class objective or your theme. So like if you're working on pirouettes, you're going to break down like what do you need to have for a pirouette? Like, okay, we need to work on plie releves and strengthening the ankles and articulating the toes. We need to work on balance. We need to open the hips. We need to. So then you're going to think about all of those exercises that are going to support how to do a pirouette. Just an example. Okay, so here are examples of um, the sections that I use right now for pre-acro and pre-ballet. So like I said, warm up, and then I have subsections, cardio, strength, flexibility, and then I go into technique, and then I go into contortion, which includes back bending, um, and then also like poses, like your mermaid kind of yoga poses and things. Then we do balancing. Um, we do a drill, which is just going to also just drill them. <laughs> And traveling, we add, we do partnering at the end of every class just because the kids love that. Um, and it is good, a whole bunch of good skills involved in that. And then deep stretching. So for ballet, you can see we start the warm up, which includes following a leader and ballet isolations. And then I do technique. Um, I start on the floor, then we come to standing, then we go into our stretching. Then we go traveling across the floor, and then I add a little creative movement. And then I end the class with a combination. So again, it depends on the age group that you're teaching, but if you do end up teaching little ones, you just want to keep them moving up and down and over here and over there and to keep them entertained. So you want to think of some sections of your class. So just off the top of your head, um, what kind of sections do you think you would want to put together for that beginner adult acro type of class? The one saying it, I subconsciously did it, like I think that's just how my brain works, is mm -hmm. naturally uh, warm up cardio just to get the blood pumping. And then I had like a mobility, not stress, just like feeling your body mm -hmm. in every step. I do that, like just roll downs and feeling your shoulders and things like that. And then I go into leg stre strengthening, leg stretches, mm -hmm. back, stretch back stretches, and then tricks at the end. So naturally, that's how it flows for me, my brain. Yeah, that's um, perfect. Yeah, yeah. And then I think with those, you could also go, you could probably narrow them down even deeper, especially since you're catering to an older audience yeah. and they can handle, you know, the specific details, whereas with the little ones, yeah, that's true. Very true. like you, like tricks, you could, you could narrow the tricks down a lot more. Like what kind of like, tricks are you doing? Limbering? Are you doing tumbling? Are you doing, you know, you could subdivide those even more if you wanted to. Yeah. Uh, okay. So then step four is to actually like sit down and choreograph your exercises, choreograph your lesson plan. Um, I like to set specific exercises to a set playlist so that the class can flow as smoothly as possible. I do this for my technique classes and absolutely for ballet. Oh, uh, for the acro, I mean, it's just like going to a gym, you know, we're going to play music in the background. We're not going to actually like choreograph the whole <laughs> routine to an acro class, except I have thought about maybe trying that with the older girls a little bit later as I get better. Um, we do choreograph the warm up for the pre girls. And that's, I mean, that's something you could look at doing if you wanted to. I, I, I love that because the kids, I don't know, it just works for me. And you're going to find what works for you. So repeat the same lesson as needed. Dancers will become more confident in the material and niche down more on corrections. That's a definite, um, that's something that I've noticed and I've seen and really helps with setting your classes. Remember, Actually, sorry. If I have a... I was having that debate with myself today because I was like, I also feel as I like to have repetition for myself as well when I train because then I see progress, you know. Mm. But I'm always worried about how kids because I, that's how they get trained and how they understand their bodies. But when it comes to teaching adults, 
does it come across as having lack of creativity, lack of planning something else? But that's just how I do it. Like for at least three weeks, I want to do the similar some of the plan to see progression. You know? Yeah. And um, I think like in the first few lessons, if you explain that to your group, then I think they'll appreciate that. Yeah. So if you just tell them like, look guys, this is how, you know, the class is going to be run. We're going to do, you know, these exercises for the next three weeks so that we can really see progress and development. And then we'll spice it up, you know, when we start plateauing. And especially you're dealing with older with older people they're going to understand all of that um and there are sometimes like now for the month of april if there's five weeks in april and i can always notice between sometimes even the third week of april fourth week like they're starting to kind of get bored sometimes so sometimes i know i need to actually start the next lesson a little bit earlier just to spice it up for them so you you're, you'll read your class um, modify, 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 and then progress and grow students from that starting point. This makes your dancers feel a sense of accomplishment. So I can't, and, and my, my high school teacher used to always say that. She's like, start small, always start small, and then build people from there. Like, don't, don't give them the big things right away. Because then it's going to make them feel like they did it, of course, with you, but they did it on their own, and they'll be proud of themselves. Like, yes, I finally got this, you know? Like, so it's that's a definite. And then again, reverse engineer the skill down to the most basic tool. So adjust as needed. So once you start teaching your classes, like you can't write lesson plans and then say, here you go, go and teach it without having teaching it yourself, I don't think. Um, Cause that's where you're gonna learn what works, what didn't work. Like I said, take notes after class, like what worked, what didn't, ch do I need to change the music? Did the kids or students get bored at some point? Um, I always make, I don't know if you can see on the little screen, but I made some notes, some little scribbles yes, yes. like there and made some scribbles here. So I know that I can go back in and just change that for the next time that I use that lesson plan. Yes. Um, yeah, notice these details as you're giving class to fix for the following week or following month, whichever. Um, and like I said, it took me, it took me a year now to write three. So I have one acro and I wrote two ballets. Sure. So that's, um, and then I just did the little ending slide here. <laughs> just start. What works for you may not work for me. We're all different and no one starts off perfect, perfectly. Like you just, just have to start. Um, so just open up your Word document on your computer and just start writing your lesson plans and you'll see that they're going to naturally take their their own form, their own unique form. Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Just... The most challenging thing for me so far has been I haven't taught something so like basic, you know. Um, I know what goes into it. Mm -hmm. like, I know what to do and I haven't had to go back down to basics. So I think... The most challenging part for me is sitting down and having to type out what is the first thing you do before you can go into a back bit, you know, and you really have to sit there and think. Yes. So I think that, that's, the, that's the hardest part right now. <laughs> and yeah, it was hard. It was difficult for me too. And then you're going to see that it's going to, it's going to happen. It'll be so easy for you eventually. Trust me. Um, okay. So I'm just going to pull up, I'll pull up some of the lesson plans so you can see what they look like. So you're looking to do, like you said, adult acro types of things. Yeah, like futuristically, I want to do like a basic stretch for like anyone who wants to stretch, um, a lesson plan for that. So people who have no experience or, and then and, I like to do like a foundation one. And honestly, it's not, it's not an age thing. It's always a level thing first. So even though like these lessons say pre, like I'm still using them on the older girls because they're beginners and they don't, they don't know any different. Yeah, that's true. It, it yeah. has nothing to do with age. It's skill first and then, you know, age levels. So can you see all of the lessons? Are they popping up on your screen? Okay. So here's what the very, very first um, acro one looks like. Can you still see this? Okay, so this is what the very, very first one looks like. I've got my warm up. So starting outside here, 
and then it goes into like stick cardio. So marching in place, frog jumps and jumping jacks. So literally I have choreographed and then isolations and strength and flexibility. I actually choreographed to two different songs, this whole warm up one, two, three, and four That's very good. To, to music so that it flowed like, and by the end of the month, all of the kids had it, you know? And then I went into back and contortion section. So Cobra, I mean, I'm just showing you kind of what it, what it looks like. It's just bullets. And honestly, you don't need to go through every single thing that you put on here in one class. Like you can shuffle things around, change it up a little bit. If you feel like the class is getting a little monotonous and then here's the balance section. Here's the technique se section, which is going to be a few different like leaps and turns and, and things drill donkey kicks. So I'll be like, okay, guys, we're going to do 30 donkey kicks today without stopping. Like, <laughs> I remember these kids are four and five years old. Um, and then we have wall work, traveling, partnering. I'll only do one or two things here. And then your deep stretching. So that's the, what the very first lesson looks like. So it's pretty slim, like there's not a lot. And then here's 10. So by the end of the year, they now have a little bit more items. So you've got your cardio and your flexibility, your back and contortion. This section back contortion work is much longer now. You see now they're from the first lesson to the 10th and now they're doing chin stands. They're doing what we call twist ups and half of the class is doing back bends from standing which is, which is great, but you can kind of see like where, um, I was trying to see if we could find something. So speaking of like pro progressional, this here, headstand, elbow stand, handstand, walking down the wall into back bend. So all of those three items, these three here, we started with just doing the poses in the center of the room. And then we took them and then we started walking their feet up the wall first. And then by the end of the year, they're kicking up onto the wall completely by themselves. So that's kind of an example of another progression. So they did it all on their own. I was never like putting them up on the wall too soon, if that makes sense. So they've done it all, yeah, by themselves. And I just did, I did an acro training. Oh, who was, it was with acrobatic arts. And they said like, you should be doing very little spotting because it should be done in a progressional way where the dancers, you know, they're doing it on their own. Um, so here's the ballet and you can kind of, I'll just pick a random one here so you can take a look now with music. So you can see, I wrote out every single measure sure. so you can read um wow. that's not the best one here let me get let me get another one here the only thing i didn't write out was our accommodations so here's the warm-up we start with traveling or follow the leader so here's the whole song each each number so number one that's one song number two is going to be the next song so if you get mixed up or lost I know I can go to my playlist and be like, oh, it's not song number four. And then I just go down my playlist, one, two, three, four, and I find the right song. So that's kind of what the ballet ones look like. Center floor work. Center standing. What's that? I said the music, like adding music to it, like actually choreograph music, listen time. So it's a lot. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's a lot. And then there's traveling across the floor, which obviously you don't need to, I have set songs, but, and then here's their combination. And I just do videos of those so that, you know, it's much, I don't want to write out a whole entire combination. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you can see, I forgot at the end, if you want to do something like this. So I wrote all of the lesson plans and then I, again, I have the skills that they should all be able to do. So I have progress charts. So yeah, so we print these out for everyone and we put their names right here. And then 15 minutes, maybe like once a month, we go into everybody's charts the last 15 minutes of class. And I just give them stickers here like, okay, you know, are you flat in your middle split yet? Can you get your nose and your toes and your butterfly stretch? 
show me what a plank is. And then here's a balancing section. So v sit, scorpions, um, releve balance for 15 seconds. Like it's beginner, limbering, hold your back bend, crab walks, back bend walks. So there's another little progression there. They obviously don't start out with back bend walks. They start with crab walks and then go to back bend walks. And then you're tumbling. So your rolls, running cartwheels, round offs, and front and back kickovers. So that's something you could do at the end of your your lessons as well. And then let me see if I can find, all right, so here's a random like dance technique level one. So this is by no means like finished. <laughs> so you can see here for this one, I, I did set a theme. So we're working on jumps and leaps. And here are your technique drills. And I set this to music. So we have a plie releve and petite allegro combo. We have a coupe hop com combo that's like plyometrics. Oh, here we go. Plyo, you know, jump combination. First position sautés with traveling. So jump drills for toe touches, batma brush hops, and then traveling leaps at 45, leaps at 90, so to shot onto a mat. So you, yeah, I don't know. That's what it looks like if you want to see. Oh, well, that's not difficult. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like seeing how, how to write it down, that it works well. And like I say, it's looking for everyone. You know? um, mm -hmm. That's how it works. It's actually like my roughly written um, lesson plans all look with the similar number one and number two. And, but um, yeah, it's definitely as well. Um, yeah, and I mean, I don't, you don't have to write this whole. Your, your measures and set to music, if you just want to write like, this is what we're going to do, one and two and three, like that's fine. Um, but I think I would future proof myself by, you never know if you're going to want to sell your lessons. And if you do, somebody else needs to be able to read the whole combination. Yeah. Just in case. And I'll show you what creative movement ones look like. So here's what a creative movement one looks like. Um, that one doesn't have a theme. I don't know why. Hang on, let me, let me go to another one. Here we go. So theme, general, and self-space. So we're working with space for this whole 60-minute class. Mm -hmm. So then we have all of the exercises. Of course, it's not set to music, so I didn't need to write out the, the measures. But you can see, you've just got, yeah, numbered exercises there. That's so reassuring that you know you have something that's right there. I think that's that's possible. You want to know you can just pull up and look and have all there. Yeah, because if somebody, if somebody calls me and says, oh, can you come and teach, I don't know, a creative movement class or just come sub this class because I can't teach and I just need to keep them moving, then I just go and I... And I pull one, you know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's that's all I have to share on lesson planning. No, I think I think what you said about decide what you want to do with them, and then do what you want to do. So yeah, I just think doing that one. I just think okay, you know, how do I? I think about the big thing. I just think okay, yeah, well, I'm going to get it. And like, yes, yeah, then you do realize that I think the mentality of trying to get to the point of 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 yeah, sometimes, I mean, sometimes you're going to make up your own words. Trust me. We all do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. No, I'm excited. Like, I'm excited to do it. I just think it's going to be a challenge. Well, it's going to be a challenge. Yeah, and like I said, just write, just start with one, and then you can kind of make it harder or make it easier, and then be like, okay, even though this time I started with that one that I just wrote, 
next time when new people come to me, I should actually start with this one, you know, and then and go from there. But you're a smart girl. You'll figure it out. <laughs> I know you're, you're detail orientated, right? Yeah. Yes. That's, that's, so you want to do it like, and just wrote down every single exercise, like creating the little thing you done in your life. Like, literally, I have my legs straight. It's like a whole thing wrong. I'm like, I naturally feel like, why is that? So, I'm just gonna, yeah. But that's the thing, because I don't think most, I don't think most dance teachers do, I'll be honest. Like, even the ones that came and interviewed, like, they don't have lesson plans. And when I went to school, like, when I went to university, that was the whole point. She's like, my teacher, because I I'm, did a, the double major, I did ed education and ballet, but she's like, you literally want to be able to go to your employer and hand them a file and be like, here's everything I can teach. Like, there's my material. And that's how I was taught. So that's kind of the way. That has lesson plans. Will you guys follow like, is it SADTA syllabus? That's that's yeah. That's like a syllabus. That's kind of what like I have here, but it's just my own. 